Welcome to, with all due respect, I'm excited to be back here today with Karina Howie, who I met on Instagram. She has this really great account. It's called, Is This Too Young For Me? The answer is no. Um, but I asked Karina to come on because she has the best personality and the best attitude towards aging, midlife, fashion, and just everything really um and I also am completely inspired by her because I am clueless when it comes to fashion I know my I know my scope I know where my specialties lie and it's not in the clothes I wear um the handle that she has on Instagram I love she says slow fashion styled from the soul what does that mean Karina welcome by the way hello and thank you for having me that means to me wearing what makes you feel good, wearing something that brings you joy. So I absolutely love fashion. I've worked in it on some level my whole life. I've been in retail when I've moved around. I've had my own shop in Norwich years ago and I've always believed in wearing clothes. I love fashion, but wearing clothes that sing to you. You put them on, you have like a positive association with them. So you feel good when you put them on and they lift you because clothes are kind of, they definitely are, are attached to our kind of spirit and our soul. And they're a bit kind of like armor too. We put them on. Sometimes we feel we need to hide in our clothes. Sometimes we feel like we don't even need any clothes. You know, we see, we, we feel so big that day that we're bigger than clothes, but we use them so much all the time. So styling from the soul to me is like, you feel it here. You wear clothes that your favorite band wore when you were young, a band that you saw last week, one of your icons wears some music that makes you feel good. If you kind of wear clothes that make you think about that, it just makes you feel good. Another brilliant one that I love is wearing clothes or pieces of jewelry that you've bought on a holiday or on a good trip or just a good time close to home, but just something that reminds you that you had a lovely time that day or that week or, or that, you know, with that person. And when you wear it, you're back there. And that's what style for the soul, from the soul means to me. Oh, I love that as well, because I definitely come from, I like to look nice, but I also, uh, well, I think I've moved away from it, but in the past of being like, but everybody's wearing like skinny jeans. So therefore I should wear skinny jeans. I better not wear my like bootleg or whatever the bootleg. Isn't that like stolen whiskey, like boot cut? See? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I stole my jeans. Um, but um, I, I've moved away from the rule-based fashion that I used to have before because I'm really keen on optimizing the clothes I already have. I'm trying not to buy too many. I'm trying to be a bit more sustainable in my clothing. Um, and so what are the type of like mistakes or attitudes that we have as women in midlife that, that you see all the time, like what are, or even restrictions that we put on ourselves? Oh gosh, there are so many. I mean, I'm a really big vintage fan. I love vintage clothes. One of the rules or, or the things that we hear is that if you wore it the first time around, you can't wear it this time around and you can it's really the simple way to wear it is just mix it up with something mix it up to be modern so wear it with something that you would wear now or something from a different decade and it just modernizes it instead of us looking like we was we've still been wearing that since the first time we wore it so there are just kind of little tricks and things around it but the rules thing I think that I got I didn't get annoyed with there are so many rules that we should do if we you know I've got I've, you know, I've got so many things I should, <laughs> I would say and laugh and sound like a cartwheel, so I should be put down with what I've got that my afflictions, wide shoulders and the straight up and down, all of these things. And there are loads of things that we can wear that kind of change our body shape to make us the best we are, you're the best you. And I think, but who's that for? Who, who is that for? That sort of being the very best you, make your legs look as long as you can and your waist look as small as you can and I bring my shoulders in and who's that really really for and and surely the person that you really want to impress but you want to feel good as yourself so I think even if you look absolutely ridiculous in something and you, you and you own it you look great in it because we all know that person who you see walking down the street and they're wearing some outfit that you think that just shouldn't work but because they're owning it it works you were on a train the other day I saw going to see your son maybe and you were wearing a man suit and tie and I just was like 
fucking hell look she just does it and I love it and I just came back from New York at the weekend and I felt like I'd like was a total like Manhattaner because I had like a royal blue spring jacket on with bright pink gloves and a, a lime green scarf and I just was like oh god whatever I'm just going to throw all these colors together and I just think that that's such a great way to like an, a good attitude to have instead of going does this match am I supposed to wear that color yeah. with that color yeah. Um, and, and so I'm embracing it all now. Like, and I think that maybe you've encouraged that a little bit to just be like, just be yourself and just do what feels like good for you, you know? Um, so when you wore that, you went straight back to Manhattan because that was your kind of vibe that you had in your head and it takes you right back there. But I, the other thing about the rules is, and they are great. I mean, stylists are brilliant. There is a place for stylists. I think that stylists professional stylists who understand body shapes and understand what colors look good on your skin tone I'm not trained in that way and there are brilliant stylists that know and understand that and I think if you are lacking in confidence it's easy for me to say oh you know put a banana suit on and rock it down the street actually we've all been in our life in places where we don't feel like that at all we just want to hide and a stylist who can give you some tricks to feel better about your body is actually worth its weight in gold, I think. So there is really a place for that. But I remember being, um, because I'm, I've always been busy with work and parenting and I'm a different kind of parent as well. And I've actually been like, I haven't got time for this. I've got time to try and remember all the rules of what I can and can't, you know, you stand in a shop thinking, can I wear that? Am I allowed to wear that? Is that on my list? Is that on my color thing? When you've got other pressures in your life. And I found that overwhelming that I can't be bothered to learn that. I've got so much shit to learn. I can't oh. bother to learn what, what clothes suit me. And I think it was that abandonment of, I'm just going to wear this because I just like it. I look back at outfits now and think, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? And I think, who cares? I felt good on the day. And anyone who's in your tribe and in your team, they just think, oh, good for you. It's your character. It's your personality. It, it's who says we have to look, who says we have to have our A game every day? Who says we have to look immaculate or perfect or wear the right shape and the right color every single day? We don't have to do that. Yeah, you're not out. the boss. You're not the boss of me. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you, you don't have to bring your A game because a lot of people say, oh, you know, you could have worn it with this or it could have been worn or that would look great with trousers or it could have had a different jacket or perhaps a different necklace. You think, yeah, it could have done, but but it didn't. And, you know, and, and you know, no one got injured. Nothing happened to me when I was wearing it just because it wasn't the, the best it could be. And there are different ways to do everything. So it's all about your energy on that day, really. And I think that's what I really believe in. You know, feeling it in your soul, you feel good if you put something on. And I think a lot of the time, if you can associate what you're wearing with something, it gives you that kind of, that, it's kind of comfort really. It can be like a comfort blanket. Never ever thought of it that way. And it's really funny because I remember um, going to a wine event once and the wine, it wasn't a Somalia, but it was a wine expert. That's how he spoke about wine, like associating it with memories. And rather than like taste notes that like people like me are like, yeah, it's taste of red wine. <laughs> I couldn't get past that. And so that's how I associate like those type of things too. And, you know, you said something that made me chuckle. Um, do you remember the, we used, oh gosh, maybe 80s or 90s, there was a thing going around where you would get your color assessment or your color wheel done. And it was like, are you a warm color? Are you a cold color? And I was given yeah. these colors to wear. And one of them was maroon or burgundy. And I was like, I can't do that. That was my school uniform. That literally is a memory I don't want to go back yeah, to. <laughs> don't make me go back. Don't make me go back there. I know. So I, there is truth in that. There's, there's absolute truth in your skin tones and what looks good with what. But you have to say, if you feel good, you, you're you above all that. I and mean, if you feel good inside and you feel happy, you just radiate out of whatever you're wearing. You're that thing, you can look good in a bin bag. I mean, that's just about who you are, like your character coming through at the end of the day. So actually a lot about dressing and clothing and everything is actually feeling good on the inside, really. If you feel good, you go out in a jeans and a, we've all done this. If you feel really good that day, you can chuck on anything and go out that night and you have the best time jeans and a white t-shirt if you feel good you could go anywhere in that if you're feeling good and confident but other times we need other other things and I think that's quite it's quite funny sometimes sometimes the people who are the least confident are wearing the most seemingly confident type 
outfits. You think they're really attention seeking outfits, you know, huge pink coats and tons of jewellery and big glasses and everything. You think that person, we assume they're really, really confident, but not necessarily, actually. A lot of people dress like that because then they can kind of hide within those clothes. There's so much psychology in, in clothing and costume. And they, I mean, I am not a historian. I'm not, I always say I am not a professional and everything, but clothing goes back through time and history about what kings are wearing. Uh, there's so much history about back from Egyptians, Henry VIII, what people were wearing and everything. There's so much, um, um, there's symbols within clothing and, and hierarchy and everything within that. And well, of course, still, there's, yeah. There's, still. yeah. Yeah. There is. Yeah, absolutely. Status symbols and everything. So uh, actually, I might put that on my list of jobs to do, which is horrendously long, is to kind of study the history of fashion, really study the history of fashion. I think it would be really interesting. Oh, you know, yeah, and we, sure. yeah, and we still do it. We kind of think about those jewelly colours, like regal colours, like purples and reds. You do think they're very regal. We do still now. It's kind of, it's in, it's in there. Yeah, for sure. And I'm a, I, trained. I love the whole, um, I'm, mad on his in history and like the Henry VIII um, perspective on things and of course he, he literally dressed and all of his court dressed better than the peasants because he wanted to be admired because of that but I just want to go back to what you were saying um, about feeling good so let's like, just get honest and a little bit raw there's a lot of women going to be listening to this in perimenopause menopause midlife feel like shit think yep. they look like shit they can't even look at themselves in the mirror because they're so disappointed about what they see and that's a whole other conversation about how we talk about ourselves and our, and our mind games and overcoming those obstacles but we've all been there too you know we we feel bloated we don't like the way we look in our clothes what's the type of conversations that we should be having with ourselves when we come across those stumbling blocks, what are some like maybe tricks that we could do just to try and elevate the way we feel? Because sometimes we're putting the claws on and sticking a bit of lippy on can ch turn the day around, right? If you if it helps to change your mood. Yeah, yeah. I literally had someone who messaged me about this. I, I get messages like this one. I've literally had one recently. A lady who's just said, "Please help me." And I think uh, one of uh, she's kind of our age ish. Um, definitely Perry, kind of many uh, men o, um, age and also has kind of challenges with additional needs, children, which my daughter has additional needs. And it's it, it, that is so challenging and overwhelming and actually can be very depressing. You have to kind of fight every day. Well, it can be battles. all consuming. It's right? overwhelming. Yeah. And, 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 and every day is almost like Groundhog Day every day. And you've got to find the energy and keep going. And she was saying, I felt really sorry for her. She was saying, um, you know, really don't, I, I'm just fed up. I hadn't been out of the house for a while, feeling really down. Exactly was saying, down about myself. I've been overeating. I don't feel good. My skin is awful and everything else. And I said, um, what well, I, I don't feel like that now, but I have felt like that. And I put a big coat on, a beanie hat. You, know, you haven't got time to, to wash your hair. You don't, or not even necessarily wash your hair, but you haven't got time to style your hair. You may not have been to the hairdressers. You don't even know what to do with your hair because you hate it so much. Get a beanie on, get a lippy on, get some moisturizer on because it just makes you feel more kind of hydrated. It makes you feel better. That tight skin feeling is awful. And get out and go for a coffee, but put a lippy on and put a hat on. Hide, hide away and make yourself go out. I think that's a really key thing. I've always done that, dragged myself out of the house and go somewhere that has a bit of energy about it, a kind of coffee shop somewhere where there's a bit of a buzz, you go in, make yourself go there. And sometimes that little bit of lippy and the, the hiding, the armor can get you there no matter how you feel. I think it's a, that kind of progress of pulling your head, turning your head space around again, because it's so wrapped up. How we feel and how we look are all intrinsically wrapped up together about what's going on in our life. And there's a point where we have to, we have to kind of, you have to fight, you have to put the big girl pants on and think, I'm going to do this, no matter how, if one foot in front of the other and make ourselves go and do it. And I think you're just, you're right. The lippy, a beanie, something to cover your hair because you, you don't even care about your hair. You know, it's awful. It's all falling out. It's you haven't had your roots done for months. You look dreadful. You feel dreadful. You know, put a beanie on, put a lipstick on. A bit of moisturizer makes you feel good. Boots, big coat. Go, go out for a walk. If you can't stand the thought of going in a coffee shop, which I've been there because you think I don't want to see anyone I know, 
go to a coffee shop where you don't know anybody drive to one if you don't want if you really don't want to see anyone you know just put some music in your ears and go for a walk because I know it feels your advice is is the same as mine it's like is it well it's essentially that it's not just how we look it's how we feel and it's the whole thing the whole thing and and I I'm always like go outside for five minutes you yeah. always feel better for going out for a little walk than you would if you just stayed home and then yeah. the next step for for me would always be that and then remove yourself from the isolation because but sometimes we're not able to do that yet you know it's all a process and all of a step can I come back to to sort of you you touched on that you know, you've been there. So are you, what was your like perimenopause? You're still perimenopausal, right? Uh, I think I might be full blown meno, but yeah. Ah, yeah. She's 50. It says on her. 51. Uh, 51. Me yeah. too. It's literally the best age in the world. <laughs> no, but yeah. so, so what was your experience? What were your challenges and how have you sort of like progressed through that journey with the big smile on your face that you always seem to have? yeah and also yeah and yeah and fake it till you make it when it comes to you know a lot of people say to me are you always that positive all the time you have to force a positive mindset that fake it till you make it that kind of i i i can handle this i feel good i'm going to get over this we've got to we've got to keep fighting and fighting this that personal struggle one foot in front of the other don't look more than five minutes ahead don't think about this afternoon even don't think about tomorrow just get through the next 10 minutes the next hour etc um but um, yeah, I, it's, it's quite complicated. A couple of years ago, I met a friend, I think it was in lockdown, just because we were outside at a garden centre. And I think that was the only place we were allowed to meet. And, um, and I met with her and she's a really good friend who's just a little bit older than me. And she said, um, and she's quite a holistic person, aromatherapist, very well informed. She said to me, you're definitely perimenopausal and I and my mum had also said to me <laughs> my mum different language I think you're on the change is what my mum said um, because I think I was acting maybe in the kitchen with talking about just how being overwhelmed with our daughter's behavior and the struggles at home but my mum also saying to me you're probably also on the change as well that's not helping matters you know this had dripped in my friend uh, my friend had said to me I think you're perimenopausal I can tell I can tell by you I can tell by your skin I can tell by you and she knows me really good friends and then I thought maybe and she told me about a uh, a, a private menopause specialist um and she said you could just have a chat with her etc and I'm a great believer in if you can afford to see a professional not everybody can if you can afford to see a professional who specializes in that field then find the money to go and see them I think I'm, I'm this is ingrained in me because I've always had back issues so I've always paid to see a physio an osteopath a chiropractor I paid to go to private pilates so I'm I, I appreciate my body it's and also I've paid for um therapy for various members of our family and your brain is this beautiful the thing that needs to be looked after and we we kind of feel quite mean about spending money on on our bodies we go out and spend 200 pounds on a, a jacket so you're essentially saying you've invested in your health i appreciate yeah. that, that it's not something that everybody can do but in this situation you had the means to be able to do i it, did right? and i had yeah. a, i had it was locked down because my first meeting was zoom and i had put all of my symptoms down to struggling at home um so i said to her i don't think i'm perimenopausal i think um and she's okay well let's just take it back to the beginning i went through a checklist um we went through a checklist of my hair was falling out my skin was in terrible condition but I wasn't looking after myself um I was constantly constipated but I wasn't chewing my food very very well because of my anxiety anxiety palpitations <laughs> it's not funny really um night terrors uh sore teeth because I'd gr I was grinding my teeth in the night so I'm, I am such a gray area. And you know, the jury is still out on whether it was extreme anxiety, peri, I suspect a both. big, yeah. a big mix up of both, but I'd just been ignored. And I, I laughed with her at the end of our conversation. Um, and I laughed with her because <laughs> I, I laughed through everything. I laugh or cry, there is no in between, or there was no in between at that point. And I said <laughs> to my husband, how shit is my life that all that's been happening to us? I just thought it was just kind of normal. You know, I didn't even think it could be anything other than just the, the stress of what we're living in at home. So I went on HRT and HRT for me and we got it right. 
quite quickly um, and I just felt kind of normal. Having said that, uh, it, it came at a time when our daughter's needs were being met better anyway. So everything was kind of coming into place as well. So it, we'll never know what it was, but I tell you, it was, it I, was hell. It was hell. And essentially, it sounds like your coping mechanisms weren't there, right? And so I know that when people talk about hormone therapy as being the thing that allows them to sort of cue into those coping mechanisms and everything around them. And I can see that that may have been something that happened to you, but it, it, it it's sort of a really great reminder too that you went on hormone therapy, but you had to do all of the other work. You had to cue into the anxiety. You had to make sure that your family was set up with structures that took the burden away from you. And because yeah. I've been, I've been under that burden. I have a child on the spectrum too. I understand that it's, it is all consuming and, and, and it also is something that often isn't in your control. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's a, a really great message that I'm hearing from you is like, who knows what it was, but I had to look at everything. You stop looking after yourself. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, this is real cliche. I think I've seen it on t-shirts and stuff yoga saved my life and I remember going to yoga and thinking I need this and again whether it was menopause age or everything I mean let's face it many of us have have additional stress and challenges on us anyway particularly at our age I think there's other things that come with our age that there's our personal our body transforming into something else and that's kind of embracing this new time wrapped up in that are other things relatives you know illness in families relatives children growing up, special needs or not, going to university, living alone. There's all sorts of other things that are wrapped up in this. And that isn't necessarily about our physical being. It's other in, in factors that are around us as well. Um, and I started yoga at that time. I started many things. I just started eating better, slowing down, really thinking about, I have to look after myself. I went to the GP about a few things and, and nurse, and I, I started having digestive, real digestive issues and things like that. And I was told by many, several, not many, several healthcare professionals, you have got to look after yourself. You, you can't pour from an empty jug. That's such a cliche. It's so true. And it's very easy to say that, um, and I used to say to everyone, I haven't got another five minutes. I haven't got another 10 minutes. I haven't got anything left, but you still have to, you have to drop something. I dropped television, I think. Okay. Me. So tell You've me. you got to drop what, something. What were I? Went I to yoga. Yeah, I, I, I've obviously experienced that myself, but what? Yoga. But, so you created boundaries then. You created yes. new boundaries. And you what did they? do it. Well, what did they specifically look like? You said, did, were you the like consummate people pleaser like I was? I love saying no now, by the way. I find it really empowering. If I don't want to do something, I go, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> no, I, 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 no, I'm so social and I would literally be, I need friends. I need to see friends. And, and I'd kind of stopped everything. I think I went um, a little bit insular, not leaving the house a bit, uh, you can be sometimes you can be isolated now my reasons were different to many but for whatever reason we can feel very isolated and alone I think friendships are so important uh, and I hate to, I don't like being sexist but female friendships we get it it's like find your tribe who are living through the same thing and if you're lucky enough if we're lucky enough to have friends in our lives that we can be really honest with and share everything that's going right, that's going wrong, that's disappointing, that's falling apart, falling off. If we can share that, then you just feel like you're not alone. So I would force myself to go out. I I love going out and doing things. And I thought I've, I've got to find this time, but something's got to give to do that. So I, I from memory, it's a couple of years ago, I think I just dropped television. I thought television, you have to go. And I didn't watch television for ages because I thought I've only got that little bit of time and that needs to be replaced with something. And I replaced it with, with me. So going out uh, to meet people, going out and being, and seeing my friends again and yoga, that yoga saved my life. And I talk, I bore everybody I know. I was literally telling a friend the other day, you need to go to yoga. And I was trying to get her to come with me on Saturday. And I said, well, I always thought about yoga that you need, you know, you need to be able to put your, your knee behind your neck and it, it couldn't be further from the truth it's like this reset moment and if you go to yoga enough and quite early on in the journey I go to yoga and as soon as you sit on that mat 
you're already you're already halfway there you're already it's your time and I've, I've got a, a friend of mine who is a yoga teacher and she starts all her practices with this is your time alone you just you and the mat and once you get your head around that you start to relax from the minute you get in before you even start that class you're just there and you you change your breathing and that comes into your everyday life it comes into controlling your breathing when things are going wrong using the out breath I was on a flight as well I was absolutely petrified on a flight it was uh, I can't remember if it was it was the first I think they cancelled the flights after our flight it was one of those horrible bumpy ones where you're the last one to leave and um I remember being on the flight and you and putting my hand on my on my upper tummy and just using the breath to try and control my emotions and that's just from I didn't go you know I couldn't go to that many classes you don't have to go every day but if you go enough you can bring that mat with you in your head everywhere you go so I think yoga for me yoga changed my life that's yoga's awesome the yoga, yeah. yoga changed my life and I think that like what I take from that is you created a mind, body, soul connection, like just you, a you connection, and then a social structure connection. Um, and those are things that are the, to me, I, I write about this in my book. They're two of the big things that disappear through perimenopause, the isolation that, that happens to us, whether we're social or not. I'm super social is a real thing because you feel as though what you're experiencing, nobody else could ever experience. It's unique to you. It is unique to you, but there's lots of other women in very similar situations to you. And then just the, we, we end up breaking those social connections and the, idea of just spending the time to do something that really serves you that something that helps you is so alien to most women you literally created the time to be able to say hey this is about me and this serves me and then once I've done this you're all better off because of it and so the more women do that I call it the the we to me scenario like where we go from focusing on everybody to focusing on ourselves and mm. to me it's a game changer and it's not selfish it's literally self-preservation right yeah and oh, we're not used to it. it this is i mean we're really broad and we're really generalizing so i'm, I'm just generalizing this is not all women but a lot of women have had a family or have had responsibilities and you're you're right you, you know, when you become a parent you put someone else's needs above your own and to be honest that's what parenting is and that's what good parents do and you put that person that little person before you and maybe you have another one and another one and you have other people in your family too and you get used to even when the kids come to play children come around your house to play with your children all those children's needs come before your needs and they do because they're children and they need to be cared for and nurtured and you're right how many years does this go on and then we don't have to do that as much as we did that's they're becoming more and more independent and you're right we've forgotten about how to put our needs first we've completely forgotten how to do it and we have to retrain ourselves and then boom this kind of menopause thing happens around that time for many people as well so there's so much going on in that time it's a really it's a really exciting time of life actually I quite like it as well because I think that I laugh at this quite a lot with my friends and I think that's sort of early this is only my experience as well we're all so different I say that all the time but I remember being kind of for early 40s and thinking you're sort of not hanging on there but it, your skin is still sort of looks quite youthful and there's just stuff about you just and you're not really cracking and creaking as much and everything else and then you sort of I my experience you go through this sort of through your 40s and you get to the point where you think, I say to, I laugh at my friends and say, oh, it's all gone tits up now anyway. I don't really give a shit anymore. And there's some, it's really liberating that you can, you can begin to, to feel well, like that in a way. If we can do that, if we can do that. Tits up our tits down. It literally. Yeah. <laughs> and I was watching, opposite. I was watching this thing with my um, husband on Netflix the other night. And it's about, some, it's, it's French subtitles and it's some French property developers. It's a big show. Can't remember what it's called, but it's their, their property. Um, they sell properties, multi-million pound mansions. And there's this French family. And there's a mother in there. And I have no idea how old she is. Um, and there was a grandmother too. Um, but maybe a little bit older than us. I wouldn't like to guess. But I, these two women were still dressing in things that we think 
I would think, I can't wear that. They were wearing these clothes and owning them. I think I love these two women. They're kind of like wearing vests and quite kind of sassy clothes and stuff that we think we should have left that behind in our 30s almost. They were wearing these and they had this lovely grandma. It was her birthday and I was it her. 85th birthday or something and she had a sort of smocky dress on quite floaty legs arms everything and she was she had an 80 odd year old body wrinkly and sort of you know sun damagey and she had her legs and I said Scott how cool is this I don't think I know any 85 year old women that get their actual legs out we've all got our stuffed into tights by then and we're not getting them out anymore she looked incredible and you just think this is so I found that even though I'm supposed to be watching about property, I was just inspired by these these females that were just wearing what they felt good in because it's hot and they didn't want to wear whatever we think and, they should. And do. the rules don't matter. There is no yeah. rules. And so, you know what? That's actually, we need to sort of think about rounding this up now. That's a really great place for us to, to leave. How do you, what would you say to women through menopause and midlife, looking looking at aging, knowing we've got 30 or 40 years left, from a style perspective, what would you like to tell them and how would you like the world to look at women as we age? Because it's a big bugbear of mine that we're, people don't want us to age. And so I'd love your perspective on that. Oh, I, don't, I know, I think we've come a long way when it comes to um, females aging and these rules. I think I read somewhere that 30 40 years ago women weren't supposed to wear jeans after a certain age or something look at coco chanel she put a woman in trousers i mean we've come a long way in, in not a long time but i think that's what i would love to see that we are able to get our wrinkles out get every and we can actually do you know we can but at the moment it's the brave ones that do it and i think you know I've got so much respect for women that do that, women and men too, anybody that just thinks this is who I am and I'm going to kind of own it. I think that has to be wrapped up for me. I think it has to be wrapped up in what's going on in your head. I don't think you can go, and I'm generalising again, but for me, I couldn't go out owning all my wrinkles and my baggage and my, um, my, my parts that I don't love if I didn't have some some confidence and some kind of high self-esteem within there and I think anybody can get this and I think it's about knowing who you are and and just being well informed about things too just having some intelligence in your mind now you don't have to be a brain surgeon I am certainly not but just have something that you're passionate about whether it's gardening or jewelry or anything stamp collecting dogs you know if you've got a cockapoo you could just know everything there is to know about cockapoo but something that gives you something that you feel that you're worth something that that makes you feel like your voice is worth listening to I think that intelligence is really wrapped up in confidence so knowing something and feeling confident about something makes us feel good and being healthy underneath it as well I think we can get wrinkles and we can get bits and bops and bits adding on and bits falling off but we've got to be healthy and if you feel strong you feel good and you you just feel strong is really wrapped up in in feeling good if you feel yeah. strong and capable I think you then feel good um no matter what you're wearing so it's it's, it's very wrapped up and I know you talk about that a lot you talk about that yeah. a lot about being strong, managing your body, eating well. You feel good, you know. And you I talk good, about look good. Yeah. yeah, strength from a from a mind perspective, from a body perspective, from an attitude perspective. It's not just about muscles for sure, and it's about respect, respecting yeah. yourself for sure. Listen, I've loved chatting with you. It's been so enlightening, and just to even just understanding like where you've come from and why you've got the message out there that you do. I absolutely love it. So, how can people find you? What's the best place? Well, I'm uh, usually spend much of my time on Instagram. I'm is this too young for me on Instagram. I also have a website, is this too young for me dot com, which is in uh, is a bit unloved, but that's being fixed. And I will be on YouTube as well soon. But you can find me on Insta, is this too young for me? That's great. And go and check out Karina. It's so great to have you on here. Thank you so much for the, the relaunch of this podcast. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Take thank care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.